Very grateful for the time of Ed Kerno from the Carlton Football Club. I don't know about the players, but certainly the supporters are in a state of delirium. And here is just a little sample why. Bowie hand passed to Merrick, but Wade did wonderfully well and hand passed it off there to Judd, who's kicked the long goal. Carlton have come back from nowhere. Inside 90 seconds left, Rance oh. coughed it up. Garland steals the football, takes a bounce, takes a second. Garland will run this one all the way to the goal square. Icing on top of a very, very sweet Carlton cake. Ed Kerno, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, Tony and Terry. Uh, just listening to that again and just hearing the roar, obviously we can modulate the sound, obviously, with equipment that we <laughs> have. What was it like out there when all of this was unfolding in front of 95,000? i tell you what, yeah, I'd never heard anything that loud uh, at a game before. So, I mean, it was quite an amazing atmosphere at the start of the game, the, the Richmond Army and the drums, and couldn't hear our, the warm-up. So it was, uh, it was very interesting. But once I got going, it kind of all fell to the back. Background. So. I, I, I want to take you back six quarters. I want to take you back to half time when I was in uh, at Amy Stadium, and Port Adelaide are just rolling beautifully. Do you actually <laughs> do you actually recall just what the feeling in the rooms was like half time against Port Adelaide? Um, yeah, I think I think we actually spoke about it half time, um, but maybe it'd be better off just staying in the rooms, not going out for the second half. Mm. That's how uh, how poor we were going at that stage. But yeah, look, I mean. I think the last, what the last two weeks have shown us is that we've just got a really strong belief in each other, and yeah, it's it's a great feeling and uh, winning games from behind. So <laughs> it's great. Uh, Tony's spoken about uh, just a couple of the players that in that game really stepped up to the plate, and seeing your players now that have cut their fair share of criticism, and I'm speaking yep. about Mark Murphy and Bryce Gibbs. Yep. I, I thought that game, uh, they did it, and I thought again on the weekend, uh, they did exactly the same thing again. So, you know, even though they have copped the criticism, when the real crunch has come, they've stepped up. Yeah, well, that's a testament to both their characters. They're both great guys and highly respected at our footy club. And, uh, yeah, look, they've had up and down games during the year. They both admit that. But when the crunch time has come on and the heat's really on, they've stepped up, which is, you know, that's great news for our footy club and, and we really need them up and firing and uh, the, the rest of the team feeds off them. So, you know, it, it's been great having them really step up when we need them in the last half of the, the two past games we've played. Now I want to take you forward to uh, yesterday's game and half time again. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, what you had done the week before at halftime sticks in your brain, but the other thing that it would have had to have been sticking into your brain and surely would have been discussed is what you have done to Richmond the two times prior, once getting you over the line and beating them and once where you really should have beaten them in round one. Yeah, well, I missed that round one game, but you know, we, we, we squandered a few opportunities up from the forward line. But look, Richmond, they came out. I mean, they had a big build-up their first finals in how many years. So they came out, started the game really strongly and, and we were probably off off the boil a bit, and um, yeah, look, we just, it was a lot, it was pretty calm at half time. we spoke about a few things that probably weren't doing as well, we were just working harder, pretty simply put, and uh, yeah, we came out, and obviously that belief of, of how we knocked them off last time in a come-behind victory when we needed to, so, and then the week before against Port Adelaide, so but the belief within the group was really strong, and yeah, it was just came out there and had a crack. What I thought was remarkable is if you had a look over the four games, nearly every player who had missed some time, even if it was one or two weeks in the lead-up to uh, to playing in that first final, nearly every player was just a little bit off, except for Chris Judd. <laughs> what a what a uh, performance his was, particularly in that third quarter. Yeah, look, he's, um, I thought it was amazing, but he had, I don't know if you Obviously, he had a whole heap of tape all over his body. I don't know what joints weren't covered in tape, but he was able to come out, you know, at 25. And well, he's a superstar. You can never really question him. Even during the week, I was kind of watching him at training, and I thought, oh, where's he going to go here? And he just came out, and he was running well. He was class. And, yeah, we're very fortunate to have him in the football club and very lucky to be able to play with a superstar of our game. One of the other things that's been fascinating to watch is what ends are the key forwards going to play? Is you know, which end is yeah. Henderson going to play? Which end is Wadey going to play? I think yeah. Mick, I think Mick got it right. 
Yeah, well, yeah, I, I suppose um, Lockie's had a great year playing forward and back, and he's been very valuable to the team. And then we know what Jared can do up forward. So it gives us a bit more X factor, I think, uh, being able to throw players around and uh, makes it a bit more unpredictable for our opposition, which is can be quite dangerous in finals. So I think it's a uh, nice little trick to have. Uh, your own role, I mean, you, you normally get the uh, the run with roles. Um Thinking about the Sydney game a few weeks ago, if I'm correct, was it uh, Kieran Jack that you got that particular game? Uh, so we had Sydney, I think it was in the middle of the year. Yeah, and, it was uh, a wet, we played, wet game, was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was a lot of rain that day. And uh, I had well, Dan Hannibal on the right. wing. Yep. Um, so, yeah, look, we'll wait and see. I mean, Sydney, are, they're a great side. Obviously, the Premier from last year, and we've got them up, up there. So... Um, yeah, look, we haven't even really looked into match-ups yet, but um, obviously they're, they're a great team and they play a great brand of final football, so it'll be very exciting for us to be able to go up there and challenge ourselves against one of the better teams in the competition. I suppose the question that it was uh, surrounding that was more, is Mick more inclined to sort of say, you've got a bloke once, I'll give you him again, or is he more inclined to sort of say, well, we're not going to let them know who we're going after and, uh, you know, because they have got so many that you could actually sit on in the in yeah. the side. Of you. He, does he change it up much for you? Yeah, he's um, he's changed up a few times this year. Um, it is because uh, you show you do show your cards a bit when you play on one opponent during the year, and then you get that same team say a few games later. Um, so that is hard. But then that's when you want to change up your own game style. So it, look, I'll wait and see. Knowing Mick, he might change up. He might not. I'm not sure. It's, going to be up to match community during the week. Ed, I've got to ask you this. When did the adrenaline, if it has, run out of you last night? Uh, um, yeah, I, yeah, not really. I mean, I, I'm, I'm living in Richmond, so I, I walk to and from the game. So I walked home pretty quickly. Yes. How sore I was. And then I, I went for another walk with my dog around Richmond. So I didn't really hit the hit the high until after midnight, I don't think. As you were walking home, and uh, <laughs> what, what what were you surrounding? What were you seeing? Oh, I, I, I don't know, mate. I was just uh, I was talking with uh, I was just talking with my family, basically, and uh, going over the events of the day. It was, they were quite shocked, and, and they, they probably had the adrenaline up from watching the game. I think they were on more on edge than I actually was when I was playing, so... Uh, it must have been an amazing atmosphere sitting in the crowd watching. But, uh, yeah, look, there looked like a lot of disappointed Richmond fans out there. Well, I can tell you one thing, that no matter what happens between now and whenever you turn your toes up, and that's obviously got a long, long time in the future, every grand final eve, when they show great finals of the past, do you know that game forever now will be immortalised because of the crowd, because of the way that Carlton came back? And just exactly, not, can't underplay Richmond's part, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, again, like just just in in buzz sort of terms to you, have you, have you. Had it been in anything more exciting than than what you experienced in those two hours yesterday? Uh, no, probably not at all. No, um, you're right. The, the crowd and the supporters that, that got along to the game, uh, it's credit to them. It was just a it really was an amazing spectacle, and uh, to be part of a game like that, I feel privileged and. Um, yeah, you know, look, Richmond, Richmond are a great club and they showed that with the support they had behind them and I'm sure they'll bounce back and they've had a great year. So, you know, we, we were just very thrilled to get the win and, and now obviously looking on to Sydney. Oh, it'll be it'll it'll be some sort of turnout in Sydney too. I look forward to heading up there. I know you're heading up there as yep. well too, Plough. Uh, well done, Ed. Thanks for sparing some minutes for us. We do know that all the Carlton boys are in demand, but to get your perspective from inside the fence was wonderful. We've got a stack of Carlton supporters that listen to the program right throughout the length and breadth of the nation. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Terry.